Welcome to the New Testament Bible study presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. I'm David Barton. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young man Timothy, encouraged him to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, Paul's encouragement both then and even now is to know and to study uh, God's word. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, is profitable for reproof, is profitable for correction, is profitable for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished, equipped for every good work. Our goal for this study is to focus on and better understand the New Testament epistles written by Paul and John and Peter and others. Open your Bible now and let's study together. But first, let's, let's pause for a word, word of prayer. prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Our God and our Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to open your word and to study. And to know, Father, that you have revealed your, your will for us in writing so that we can read and understand how you would have us to live. And we pray, Father, you'll bless us as we study together on this occasion that we might open our hearts and our minds to your word. Bless us as we continue our Study through the book of Philippians. We're grateful for the Apostle Paul, thankful for the writing of this beautiful letter. In Jesus' name, and amen. Welcome to the New Testament Bible study. Our lesson today is taken again from the book of Philippians, this time chapter 4. Now earlier Paul has set a very powerful goal for us to follow. He said in the third chapter at verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And so we should also follow that same example that Paul set before us. And now Paul will issue a final encouragement uh, for joy and rejoicing in the Lord. Our lesson text is taken from chapter 4 and we'll begin the reading at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there, be, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. The overall theme of Paul's letter to the Philippians is joy and rejoicing. And in verse 4, as we begin today, Paul writes, Rejoice, again I say rejoice. Verse 4 is perhaps the theme of the Philippian letter and is the very heart of Paul's life and, and his teachings. A letter written to the first century church with a message of joy to faithful Christians for centuries to come. Now back in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, Paul wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Paul's Ephesian letter was written to the saints who were faithful in Jesus Christ. That's verse 1. All spiritual blessings, as Paul writes, belong to those who are in Christ. Those who are outside of Christ, those who have never put Jesus on in that simple act of baptism, are not subject to receive the spiritual blessings that are reserved for those who are in Christ. So Paul writes to the faithful Christians at Philippi, and he says, Rejoice. And then in verse 5, Paul says, let your forbearance, the King James uses the word moderation, let your moderation be known to all men. And the word Paul uses is closely associated with patience and gentleness. 
Both are characteristics of the Christ, and Paul encourages us to to demonstrate forbearance, moderation, patience, gentleness in our lives. For the Lord is near or at hand, Paul says. For the Christian, Jesus is always available. This is a promise that we have from Jesus himself. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then in verse 6 of our lesson text, Paul says, Be anxious for or in nothing. Because the Lord is near, the Christian can truly rely on Him. Turn with me to 1 Peter. I want to look at that fifth chapter, and we'll look at verses 6 through 11 of 1 Peter. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever and amen. In everything, Paul says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. See, prayer is one of those spiritual blessings that belong to the faithful child of God. 1 Peter 3 and verse 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. Now this portion of Paul's Philippian letter, verses 6 and 7, is a promise from God. In verse 7, Paul says the promise is the peace of God, a peace that is beyond our understanding. The context of this fourth chapter is Christian joy. Joy found in the peace that comes from God. In Romans chapter 5, those first two verses of that fifth chapter, Paul writes on that occasion, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The peace that comes from God comes through Jesus Christ. Notice the last part of verse 7 of our lesson text. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. Notice, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The promise of peace is to those who are in Christ. Jesus in John chapter 14 promises to give his followers a peace that is not like that which the world gives. In verse 27 of John 14, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you, lest your hearts be troubled, nor let them be afraid. A peace that Paul says shall guard your hearts, shall guard your minds in Christ Jesus. And now in verse 8 of our lesson text, Paul turns from his final encouragement to joy to a final encouragement to Christian growth. Finally, brethren, let your minds dwell on these things. Now Paul's going to list six different things. These are motives or characteristics or virtues which lead to and promote Christian growth. Paul says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is right, pure, lovely, whatever is of good repute, these characteristics have been described as seeds of the fruit of the Spirit, seeds of spiritual growth. And Paul says, think or dwell on these things. Let them be the focus of your thoughts so that they may become natural expressions of your Christian way of life. 
In verse 9 of our lesson text, Paul says, in addition to that, follow my example. He is repeating the admonition from chapter 3 at verse 17 where he, he writes, Join in following my example. The things that you have learned, that you have received, that you have heard and seen in me. Paul's admonition is twofold. Both his teachings and his lifestyles are, are implied. Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. For you see, Paul followed Jesus the Christ. First, practice the things that you have learned and received of me. This is Paul's teaching and preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. I've been looking at verse 15, familiar passage. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver to you, first of all, that of which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the first four verses of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. The second part of Paul's admonition was to practice the things that you have heard and seen in me. This is following Paul's lifestyle, following the example that he set before others in the way that he lived. The way we live is what the world sees. Paul's example was important, and so is our example. So friend, what does your example say to the world about you? Are you following Jesus Christ? Is he the focus of your life? Are you practicing the teachings of Christ on a day-to-day -day basis? Remember Hebrews chapter 13? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And friend, that applies to all of Jesus' teachings, including the plan of salvation. For you see, it has not changed through the years. It too is the same yesterday today and forever. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. God's grace and an obedient faith that leads to baptism is God's eternal plan for saving mankind. So to be in a saved relationship with, with God, we must be willing to follow all of His teachings concerning salvation. You must believe with all of your heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You must be willing to make that good confession before men. You must repent and turn away from your sins. And then in simple obedience, put Jesus on in that act of submission called baptism. Jesus himself said in Mark 16, 16, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. God's done His part in making salvation even possible by Jesus' death on Calvary's cross. Remember Paul in Romans 1, 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it, the gospel, is the power of God that leads to salvation for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So friend, if you have questions about the gospel or about your salvation, please contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We would love to sit down and talk with you about the gospel plan of salvation just as revealed in the pages of the New Testament. Thank you for studying with us today. May God bless. Give me the Bible.